Afro Forum. Uh, you have 20 minutes. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Fanze. Uh, you have 20 minutes to do your presentation. Uh, good morning to everyone, and uh, thank you for the opportunity, firstly, to uh, and the platform to for Afri Forum to give our comments uh, on the uh, on this bill. So, uh, just uh, some quick admin out of the way. Uh, I am Adam Svansail. I'm campaign officer for strategy and content at Afri Forum, and uh, this will be Afri Forum's response uh, to the proposed prevention and combating of hate crimes and hate speech bill, uh, which we also submitted a written commentary on. So, firstly, as a civil rights organisation, Afri Forum supports the imposing of sanctions on actual hate speech, which contains incitement to violence as limited by the constitution within its parameters. However, the proposed prevention and combating of hate crimes and hate speech bill uh, distorts the ordinary meaning of the term hate speech if passed into law, and it will effectively criminalize constitutionally protective speech. That is what Afri Forum is worried about, and that's our key concern that we also voiced at the previous opportunity when this bill was also being uh, put under consideration. Our submission will demonstrate that the bill infringes on the rights of freedom of expression and therefore cannot pass uh, in its current form because it doesn't live up to constitutional muster. Within the context of public policy, there are four main reasons why freedom of expression is so valuable. And I think that's what uh, I want to lay out first before we get into the bill itself, because this is in the end uh, uh, inherently uh, uh, matter regarding freedom of expression and therefore we need to make sure we got the fundamentals right and have the, our foundation laid uh, for why freedom of expression is so important. So just quickly, the four reasons why, as AfriForum identified, is that firstly, it aids us in the search for truth. Secondly, it is vital for the functioning of a democracy. Third, it enhances moral agency. And fourth, it instills tolerance. Uh, I will now elaborate on each. Firstly, the matter of truth. Allowing the free dissemination of beliefs, opinions, and other forms of expression brings immense benefits for society and for individuals. It allows for intellectual, cultural, and scientific progress while provoking discussion and aiding the search for truth. Since we all make mistakes and are fallible, we cannot know with certainty that a particular opinion is false. What we uh, when we suppress opinions that are believed to be false, we risk missing out on finding the actual truth if we are mistaken in that regard. If we stifle beliefs that are different from our own, we lose the opportunity to change, reconsider, and perhaps reaffirm our own views. Next, the matter of democracy. Freedom of expression is the cornerstone of a functioning democratic state. It exposes people to opposing viewpoints and allows them to make informed and legitimate discussion, uh, decisions about their political and private lives. Your right to freedom of speech also enables you and others to defend you and your uh, and others' rights if they are under attack. Without it, you are silent. Freedom of, expre uh, freedom of expression is therefore crucial to any constitutional order, seeing as without it, you can't really stand up for any of your other rights, uh, seeing as you will not have your, your, your speech to do it. The matter of agency. Next, uh, the legal philosopher Ronald Dworkin wrote, and I quote, morally responsible people insist on making up their own minds about what is good or bad in, in life or in politics, or what is true or false in matters of justice and faith. Government insults its citizens and denies their moral responsibility when it decrees that they cannot be trusted to hear opinions that might persuade them to uh, dangerous or offensive convictions. We retain our dignity as individuals only by insisting that no one, no official, no majority has the right to withhold an opinion from us on the ground that we are not fit to hear or consider it. And that is the end of that quote. When people are exposed to a range of conflicting opinions on a subject, they are given the opportunity to exercise their rational faculties and to weigh up the arguments on both sides and to form their own view on the matter. Societies that allow for a broad selection of opinions create an environment that strengthens people's analytical skills and trains them to question the views that are presented to them and not just accept them all uh, by default as fact. Next, the matter of tolerance. In the case of the SANDU versus the Minister of Defense and another, the Constitutional Court held that, and I quote, the corollary of freedom of expression and its related rights is tolerance by society of different views. 
tolerance, of course, does not require appro approbation of a particular view. In essence, it requires the acceptance of the public airing of disagreements and the refusal to silence unpopular views. In a seminal paper on the dangers of suppressing hateful speech, Denise Meyerson wrote, and I quote, to, uh, and this is actually a sentiment that was expressed uh, earlier in one of the presentations, I quote, to drive an evil view underground can actually increase its strength, whereas to debate it out in the open is more likely to bring home its abhorrent nature. It is precisely those who, after all, believe there is a truth about the awfulness of racism, who should be optimistic about the power of debate and argument to demonstrate that truth. They come to their views by reason, and since they do not believe themselves to be intellectually superior, should trust in reason rather than the police force as the better weapon against falsehood. It is only too easy for censorship laws to be put to different uses for those originally intended. And if we are happy for them to be deployed in one way, we make it much easier for them to be deployed in another, more frightening way later. And the final consideration here is that to the extent that racial animosities will continue to plague us, it is better to let them be played up at the level of words rather than to be bottled, uh, have them bottled up, therefore not only increasing their virulence, but also making more likely a more dangerous kind of discharge. Forced as we are to weigh up evils here, we should therefore conclude that tolerance is more beneficial than costly, end quote. Uh, now moving on to the details of the bill itself. So firstly, the, the bill's definition of harm. Section one of the bill states, harm means any emotional, psychological, physical, social, or economic harm. Now, firstly, when it comes to emotional harm, uh, a host of words can make people feel a range of emotions, such as anger, uh, fear, anxiety, disgust, sadness, shock, and the list goes on. Emotional harms are felt subjectively and they tend to be fleeting. Uh, and the case of Moyu versus Minister of Justice and Constitutional Development and others, and Masuku and another versus South African Human Rights Commission, over South African Jewish Board of Deputies, make it clear that speech that provokes strong emotional responses or even instills fear is protected speech. Uh, that is what the conclusion uh, of that court, of those court cases were, and therefore mere emotional harm is the wrong standard. Secondly, social harm. Unlike psychological, physical, and economic harm, the term social harm is a nebulous concept and may cover a range of yet-to-be-determined harms. Since its scope is unknown, it should be removed from the definition uh, used in the bill. Next, the bill's definition of hate speech. Uh, section four of the bill states that one, A, any person who intentionally publishes, propagates, or advocates anything or communicates to one or more persons in a manner that could reasonably construe to demonstrate a clear intention to one, be harmful or to incite harm, or two, promote or propagate hatred, or three, uh, based on one or more of the following grounds, and the bill then outlines an extensive list um, that uh, I think everyone here is aware of. Uh, so, on that matter of hate speech, the constitutional standard regarding hate speech is that, is that of freedom of speech that does not extend to the advocacy of hatred that is based on race, ethnicity, gender, or religion, and which does not constitute incitement to violence or to cause harm. According to the bill, however, the mere propagation of hatred is, uh, or harm is sufficient for the speech to be regarded as hate speech. Another problem, and that is problematic. Another problem, as noted before, is that the word harm is defined in the bill as including emotional harm and social harm. Furthermore, the grounds on which hate speech can be committed according to the bill are far too reaching and in includes age, for example. The consequence of that means that mocking someone based on their age or using an, ex using an expression like calling someone an old fart or an old fool could amount to a criminal offense, pun uh, offense punishable by three years in jail. Con the conjunctive test is the next thing that I want to touch on. In the Kualani versus South African Human Rights Commission and another, the court settled a long-standing debate about whether the provisions of section 10, no, number one, of the Peputa ought to be read conjunctively or disjunctively. The court determined that they must be read conjunctively. This means that if it, it would be unconstitutional to use the word or between sections 4, 1, one Roman numeral and two Roman numeral of the bull. 
it is, necess it is a necessary requirement to use the word and between these sections uh, based on that case of Kulani versus the South African Human Rights Commission and another. The next uh, point that I want to touch on is listed grounds. The constitution limits the specific grounds for hate speech to race, ethnicity, gender, and religion. Further grounds are listed in the equality clause, which supports the view that the constitution delib and this supports the view that the constitution deliberately limits hate speech to the four listed grounds of race, ethnicity, gender, and religion. To add further grounds would, without infringing on the right of free speech, the bill can be appropriately modified by including them under the correct threshold uh, as stipulated by the constitution. The grounds on which hate speech can be committed according to the bill is therefore too far reaching and includes uh, many factors like, for example, age that open many problematic scenarios. Incitement to cause harm is the next point that I want to touch on. The ordinary meaning of the phrase incitement to cause harm suggests that one should not look to the harm caused by the speech itself, but rather to the impact of the speech on third parties, i.e. does the speech encourage, stimulate, or call others to cause harm. Next, uh, every forum's presentation is not just critical of the bill and uh, just listing things that we think are problematic about the bill. We also have recommendations uh, on what can be done. So given the, uh, that the bill introduces criminal sanctions, there is less room to limit the right to freedom of expression than may be allowable under Papuda. A legitimate purpose of the bill would be to protect people from imminent violence and incitement to cause harm. This can be achieved without unduly infringing the right to freedom of expression by using the limitations set out in section six, uh, 16, uh, uh, section two uh, of the constitution to define hate speech. Further recommendations can be found uh, in AFRI Forum's written submission. Um, there's a, a further longer list there, but for the uh, purposes of time, uh, I can't go into all of it. So therefore, uh, in conclusion, uh, it is evident that the costs of adopting the definitions of harm and hate speech that are proposed by the bill would be heavy. It's also unclear whether there would be any benefit in doing so. As Judge Barker once said, and I quote, to deny free speech to engineer to deny free speech to engineer social change in the hope of accomplishing a greater good for one section of our society erodes the freedoms of all. End quote. We, bug, we began by drawing a distinction between actual hate speech, which is constitutionally unprotected speech that incites harm or violence against vulnerable groups, and hate speech as defined by the bill, which prohibits, uh, which prohibits protected speech, speech that we, would be protected under the constitution. Next, we examine the importance of the right to freedom of expression by demonstrating its role in a functioning democracy, the search for truth and personal development for citizens. We argue that the pro uh, prohibition in the bill is a severe infringement on the right, because, on this right, because of the penalty that it imposes and uh, perturbing effect it has on freedom of expression. We proceeded to argue that the state can take less restrictive measures by, one, changing the definitions of harm and hate speech that are used in the bill to render it constitutional, second, addressing the problem of arbitrary persecution under the bill, and third, and lastly, using restorative justice measures to deal with most instances of hate speech and reserving imprisonment for cases where the targeted personal group of people suffered actual harm as a result of being incited, of that being incited against them. So that's the short version of uh, AFRI Forum's uh, recommendations in our written commentary. This bill in its current form will be unconstitutional if passed. And I think that's something that needs that has been uh, noted by uh, many of the speakers that came before me. Uh, but it is a very important point that if this bill were to be passed uh, in its current form, it would be, uh, and as the Quilani case shows, the Constitutional Court will strike down this bill immediately. Uh, therefore, it, it needs to be uh, very, uh, it needs to be reconsidered in earnest. Uh, legislation should not be applied to protect, and final thoughts uh, on this, uh, legislation should not be applied to protect people from speech or symbols that are merely offensive because the spectrum of, uh, of that which people fi may find offensive is almost endless. Debates over freedom of speech and freedom of expression are inherently controversial in nature, as the right to freedom of speech is entrenched to protect speech that some people or governments might find offensive and speech uh, which they may not like. If freedom of, uh, of speech protected only speech that was popular and speech that everyone liked, 
it would not be necessary for the constitution to protect it in the first place. Um, thank you very much for the, for the opportunity and uh, that is the, the entirety of AfriForum's oral submission. Uh, thank you and uh, have a nice day. If there are any questions, I will gladly answer them. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fanzel. Uh, honorable members, any questions or comments? Honorable Mola. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, of course, uh, let us um, thank uh, the Afri Forum for having taken effort to come and echo its views in the development of this bill. The presenter correctly makes mention of uh, section 16, subsection two of the constitution, which says the right in subsection one, which is the freedom of expression, does not extend to. We skip others, we go to paragraph C. Does not extend to advocacy of hatred that is based on race. Now, the question that I want to pose is very short like this, Chair. Do you consider racism as a crime, as a hate crime? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Moila. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Sinan, uh, Mr. All right. Uh, yeah, to, to answer that question, as I understand the definition of a hate crime, if it is a crime committed against someone and that crime is also motivated by racial hatred, uh, then of course uh, racism would be a hate crime in, if it meets that criteria of, as I understand, a hate crime, a crime committed against another person or group that is motivated by racial hatred, then of course um, uh, racism would be a hate crime. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Fanzel, for making an effort to enrich our legislative drafting. All comments or presentations will be taken into consideration when the bill is dealt with clause by clause.